<coughs> awesome. We are back. Brilliant. Let's just reposition to work slightly better. There we are. Awesome. So, guys, if you're watching now, um, don't see any viewers yet, but this might be on replay for some of you. So, we're doing the monthly live. This is something we do at the beginning of every month, um, just as a bit of a catch up uh, and interaction with. Uh, followers, subscribers, and everything like that. And we, we talk about uh, numerous different things. So if you've got any questions, you can leave them in the in the chat box. If you want to make a donation to the channel, there's the super chat option as well. That always goes helping out with the production costs of the videos and things like that and upkeep and all of that. There's going to be things I'm going to talk about today, which I'm not going to, you know, don't mention in videos uh, as a bit of sort of spoilers for future things we're doing. Um, you know, we've got, I've, I've managed to get very lucky once again, and I and just must say a huge thank you to everyone who helps out and, and friends. Uh, you know, they're, they're fantastic and um, just, just massive thank you, everyone. But anyway, we, we managed to get a pair of birds, and don't get me wrong, I've got my name on them. Um, so they're coming to me, all going well, but hopefully we, we've got a bit of something exciting uh, coming in just after christmas sort of time so so something to look out for um after the after the christmas um period uh we've got another special pair i think the best thing to say is special pair of birds nothing you've ever seen on my channel and i don't believe you've seen them on the other channels as well no it's not arctic red poles obviously i teased that last uh in the last um uh video in the in the last uh live session and um sorry guys i'm, ju I'm just up i'm just uploading this onto facebook uh just to let people know um so we've got a pair of birds hopefully coming in there very exciting something i don't think has been shown on youtube at least much before at least in depth of how i'm going to show them uh, so i'm really looking forward to that uh, but i'm not going to give you any more spoilers on that um and hopefully hopefully you'll uh you'll enjoy seeing it so so there's that and i'll probably touch on that a bit more in detail later and that comes as a bit of a follow-up from the lancashire show anyway is after seeing some of the birds there which were there um then you know it's made me think yeah i wouldn't mind a pair of them and then i've ended up where thinking it through well i tell you what i could i have got room where it's only this one bird that I would make room for and move on another pair of something. I managed to hopefully get a pair. So something exciting there. But there's all sorts on it. So obviously guys, please if you're watching, then just drop any questions you've got in the in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. Um that can be questions about myself anyway. That can be a question about the birds and I'll I'll do my best where appropriate uh to to help you out there and, and answer your questions um yeah sorry guys just still just putting it on um uh what do you call it facebook just to just to promote a bit more um and uh, just just get more people on people enjoy this and obviously it's something that you can never always set a date and exact time for in such an advance uh, in advance because obviously now we're not going to do one for generally about four weeks. The next will be uh, in the new year, which so this will be the last monthly live of this year, uh, and then we'll be going um, to to do uh, to do the next one probably what um, I think it's I think the first of January is actually a Saturday. Let me have a look. Um, so it could well be January first. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, that's right. First of Jan. So the first of Jan is going to be the next monthly live, I hope. Um, and then we'll be doing some work um, from there on that. And I'll tell you more time, but, but presume it's about 7 p.m. Um, obviously, it's New Year's Day anyway. So everyone's going to be bladdered from the night before. So it's not going to be one where, you know, oh, I can't fit that in because I will. Um, so, yeah. Um that's just part of that with, with the birds we've got all sorts going on uh you know and i'm so glad how fast it's gone since the end of the molt because last year it just felt such a drag and i think with the shows being on now and a lot more happening it's definitely running a lot quicker um really august to october is a bit dull 
you start to see the birds come through like but there's not an awful lot you can do because you can't catch them up because they're molting you don't want to stress them out and all sorts of stuff like that um so that's that's just part of it uh but then at least last year without the shows on it was basically you know i'm sat with all the birds from october till till april you know it's six months is a long time uh to not be doing anything with them um so it's good that we've got the shows on it means that you can get the birds out people are also getting their birds and showing them so you can put them on facebook let's see what people think compare them and overall just have a have a good time um doing that sort of thing um so yeah really pleased that we, we've got some shows on this year i know that the situation with covid at the moment um is is not great but hopefully you know we're coming through all right and and there doesn't seem to be much problems with the new variant so you know that's all right touch wood and um, so we're going to see how that goes um, and hopefully the shows will be on and then of course kicking the teeth if it's not covid it's avian flu and there's avian flu um obviously going about at the moment i've got to be really careful um i know stafford is on tomorrow they're doing a stafford i don't quite understand that i've not been before but there's a stafford show tomorrow um which is I think it's help bird keepers show or something like that. I've not been myself. I've got a few friends going who's going to let me know how it is. But as far as I, from what I've been told previous years, apparently it's more focused on parrots. I don't know if you are going tomorrow. Just let me know in the comment section. I'd actually like to see what you think of it. Um, you know, drop me a message on Facebook or Instagram or something like that, or even just comment under another video and let me know how it was because. I thought about going and I've just I've not got time. I've got, got a few things I've got to do tomorrow just with the birds anyway. You know, it takes a lot of time cleaning them out um, and just keeping up with the general care of them. So so that's, you know, that's my plan tomorrow rather than going to Stafford. But don't get me wrong, Stafford's not a long way for me. It's not ages away, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not a five-minute drive. So it's a bit of something there. Um with 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 that and, and still guys just so you know i'm not playing on my phone on this i'm literally just uploading it onto um what do you want to call it yeah social media um so people more people can join and enjoy it because a lot of people do want to come on these things um and can't for whatever reason because they don't you know they don't know it's on or anything so by me uh doing doing what i'm doing and just putting it on sites and stuff then means people are likely to join participate and have a uh, have a good time uh, doing that i mean the 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 show we did uh, it would have been um october yeah so it was the, it was the one before stafford i mean that, that was ages and that was a brilliant session i think we had about 40 or 50 um people on um on that whole session which was which was awesome you know it was great to have a chat with everyone to see how everyone's doing and um there we are finished uh so yeah it was it was really good at a, a good time good golf with hi how are you um i was saying in interesting fairly good stuff tomorrow oh and off your matrix says hi uh, hi off your matrix uh I'm good, thank you, Goldfinch. Um, no, I'm not going to Stafford tomorrow. I'm afraid. I was I was thinking of doing, um, but you know, I just I sadly don't have time. Uh, you can hear the cockatiel. Yeah, yeah. I've I've got a. Um, sorry, I'm not interested in any facts, by the way. Sorry, I'll, I've got too many at the moment. I'm thinking I'm going to have to move a couple of canaries on. Yeah, we've got a cockatiel at the moment. Uh, not my bird. It's just the um, a family friend's bird um and yeah so it's just it's just a family friends bird we're looking after obviously um you know it, the best person it can go to is me so it goes to me i mean i've bred cockatiels in the past um and and done quite a bit with cockatiels up until probably what i started in 2017 with them uh and finished with them in in 2020 so we, we had a good four years with them you know 2017 18 19 and 20 we had four straight years with cockatiels um and did really well to be honest uh not a case of showing them uh but just the breeding of them the keeping of them i used to colony breed cockatiels um and it worked really well i must say we ended up where we got 
we I think we began with one pair and really started to go well when we were getting um, a clutch of five, all five being like brought up, reared, and then we've got five young cockatiels. Um, and it was brilliant, really enjoyed having the cockatiels. Mm. We then went to two pairs and that just went well. And then we ended up to four pairs for the last two years. Uh, but you know when you got four or five young cockatiels per nest, coming out and let's say the, the snap for th three weeks up to three weeks it's going to take five weeks for them to leave the nest so that's eight weeks and then three weeks on top of that call it two weeks for that it's about 10 week process um of 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 getting the cockatiels from laying to the, the you know the egg to then uh being fully sort of sorted out and, and they're fine um and we we had cocktail do that so we, we get a good four clutches per pair per year which was brilliant uh, and that that meant that it would fund a lot because i wouldn't hand rear them but i would handle them as youngsters so we had them so when they left the nest they were completely normal you know completely used to people uh, and then they would go to to people and don't get me wrong i would never sell them for a stupid price because just wasn't worth it for me but they went for a reasonable price as an avery bred bird would because they were avery bred but they're handled and i had people coming from scotland uh coming up from london I had a guy from cornwall come for a cockatiel and and I, I had a really good network going with them but sadly you know the interest was more in the british birds anyway um, and we ended up moving the cockatiels on a friend had some and they, they're doing brilliant for him and they're, they're long-lived birds and, and long breeders you know um I think I got a hen who was eight years old and she was no stopping. If you have any female fives, so it would, would be the best way to contact you. Um, hi, uh, Hussein. So I might have uh, a single five hen to go, and I'm talking a feed of five here, just so you know. I'm not, you know, this is not a bird that's of any show quality whatsoever. Um, so if you want to contact me, Facebook or Instagram is the best way of where I'm going to see that message. Uh, obviously, uh, at a OC Avery for both Instagram and Facebook, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to find me on there. I might have a single hen to go. I've been working out my pairings uh, recently. And um, there's been a bit of a change as to where birds are going to be going in terms of the, for the breeding season. Because uh, I mentioned earlier in the video, I know we've got 30 viewers in now, so a lot of you guys haven't well, have seen this uh, or hear me say about this, but we've got a pair of birds coming in, which I've wanted since I managed to start out with getting contacts for British birds, which was five or six years ago. Um, I've been wanting them ever since. I've been trying ever since. And I just dropped really lucky and a friend's managed to get, it was, has got a pair of what they are. I'm not going to tell you what they are. Um, because I, I, it, hopefully it's going to be all fine and we're going to get them. But if it doesn't go through, I don't want to let people down. So I'm not going to tell you what they are, but we've got a pair of something coming in that's going to need a, uh, it's going to need its own flight. Um, and therefore, where's that going to go? Well, I think there might be a move back with the spares flight and then we'll end up putting them in a different bird room um, and, and then mixing them around with the young birds. So there might be a pair of canaries to go. Um, or a, a single hen or something like that. Um, or I might I might lend them out to a mate or something like that if he needs them. Uh, don't get me wrong, I need to keep a red pole hen or two back anyway. Uh, for next year, you, you, you're bound to. So something always goes wrong, and especially with the heat, the red pole hens don't want to get off the nest. Um, so having a red pole that's, you know, having two hens really just sat available to just take out the flight and put in with the cockbird if we lose a hen is really ideal. So I need to make sure we've got two of those available at all times uh, throughout the breeding season. Uh, sorry. Um, so, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I'll just sorry. I'm just replying to a message on someone who's on the live. Um, so, so yeah, so we're going to be changing a bit there. Um but it's not going to be any massive change and don't worry you the birds that are coming in you're going to be more than happy with i can promise you that now it's really exciting i am stoked to get these i'm like come on we finally got a pair um and so yeah it, it'd be really good um 
sorry, mate. Sorry, guys. I'm replying to a message. Someone on on here who's having difficulty. Um. So yeah. Uh, so that's just a bit of a plan with that. I, I can't really say much else because I don't want to tell. I, don't, I, I want to make sure it goes through first. And as soon as we've got the birds, I'll let everyone know. Um, be after Christmas. So call it a month's time. Hopefully we might have them. Um, so, yeah. So there's a bit of all sorts, really. Um, and obviously I've got another comment here. If, I love Canary just for the singing. If I was not really into shows, but singing like mad. Yeah, the Canaries are brilliant for that. Um, you know, the... I, I remember when I was, as a kid, and I'm, this is I'm talking six uh, years old. My uncle had a pet canary in the house, um, and then when he'd go on holiday, he brought the bird round, and I absolutely loved the song to to come down. And that was the first real experience with cage birds for myself. Was about six years old, um, and having a, a a canary that was. Uh, not mine. It was it was my uncle's, and we would look after it. In, in when he went on holiday, it was brilliant. I loved it. You know, sat just watching the bird and enjoying it. That was great. Um, and then you know, I had chickens myself. Uh, he had chickens then from when I was probably about eight years old. So we'd we'd raise chickens as um, literally from egg. So we'd have an incubator actually in this room on the the uh, table in here, um, and we'd hatch chickens. We'd have then brooders set up, and we'd. You know, oh, brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Had a really good time. Um, uh, so, yeah, it was it was great. Really, really good fun. Uh, and I love doing that. Hi, mate. Any plans coming up for more on soft bills? Uh, hi, Josh. So, for myself, no, I'm not going to be keeping soft bills, at least this year. Um, we're considering, we've, we've got a bit of room Um where we could get a let me get this right i think it's about 24 feet long aviary um and we've been looking at it this is literally this is literally just talking off the top of my head here this is not confirmed it's simply something we've been looking at thinking that, that could work where we've got room for a 24 foot aviary it's massive um and we might be able to get a pair of soft bills or two um but more on that in the future. I can't tell you anything. Uh, meant on the channel. Oh yeah. So yeah. Um, yes, there's going to be uh, a few videos on, on that. I'm hoping to go and see a soft build breeder and get a, a look around the setup and have a chat with the guy because uh, there's not a lot on keeping soft builds. Uh, you know, not a lot of information on them. Um, and then we've done a Zoom call with Bernard Williams. Um, um, I literally, this is the other day, you might have seen it on Instagram or Facebook. Um, but we don't cover, cover soft bills on that. However, we definitely need to do a follow-up episode because we, we focused on the history of the hobby. We focused on breeding clear pied greenies. We focused on hawfinches and breeding hawfinches. And we spoke about um, shows and, and experiences of that and different birds that have cropped up throughout the shows for a number of years um and, and bernard has bred a variety of soft bills in the past uh jays wagtails um all sorts of stuff like that um so hope what i want to do is do a video with bernard on a bit more of the, uh, his past with keeping soft bills and then we'll do another soft bill episode to try and get more out there uh, looking forward to that so matt's video with him yeah um yeah honestly bernard williams absolute legend brilliant absolutely loved the the zoom call with him really 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 good um jerry's really did was very good oh thank you josh um so yeah so we need to do more on soft bills that's for sure um they are something that's obviously not as commonly kept but i'm doing i'm going, definitely going to get a few bits done with that um obviously we try and focus on the native soft bills uh, at least through the natives and norwich zoom room episodes and stuff like that uh, we, I am debating with the idea. I'm thinking for the breeding season, there's not always, you know, doing something every week is fine. Um, and I've, I say I've got the volume now where there's always updates every single week. Um, 
but should they not be then what i might do is we'll do a breeding video on like a, a saturday morning on the breeding season and then on the tuesday's video the following video which is usually a shorter one or something different i'm thinking of doing maybe we'll talk to one guy talking about um breeding scarlet ibis for example and then we'll do another one talking about breeding uh corvid species um, and then we can we can open up the range like that and then we'll go into more sort of um foreign soft bills so you know maybe uh minor birds and things like that and we can do interviews on that don't worry, i'll never keep soft bills like that i don't think unless i manage to get a massive aviary where i can have that planted and keep all the british as well uh but i did, I did really really want to try that um uh and, and and we'll try and get open up the reach there a bit more with the more unusual varieties um so there's information on that and hopefully by doing that people will want to keep them want to source the birds and then it'll increase their overall numbers and um, over time with more people wanting them uh let's read some more comments here um yes nate so good for you. excellent josh o'brien oh did you pick up a rebound hen i did them last year you need live food every day so the year they'll breed hi brian um no i've not managed to pick up a rebound in hen um there was a hen i was putting you know there's a guy who i was putting contact with about getting the hen uh the problem was is that the bird was gonna the bird was the same price as the courier costs and it adds up very quick um and, and to be honest, I got the reed bunting out of interest for just enjoying keeping the bird um, and just look, you know, as a as a, it's something to enjoy and, and show maybe rather than as something to overall breed. However, I've got I've been contacted by a guy who's got a hen who um, he just can't he, he, the bird can't be moved on. He's had the bird for a few years, never managed to breed off it. Uh, so what I'd rather do is make sure that his birds put to good use as well as mine, and whether I might lend him the hen or something like that. So the cock bird I've got, so he can have a pair. I know he's wanted to for a few years, and I'd rather help someone out who's got a hen that might be on its last year or two rather than um, getting my own and maybe not having the room for it. I'd rather go to someone who's got a specialist set up for them. So I think that's probably the 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 plan for the reed bunting but i mean i've loved having him he's a great little bird um and obviously something that's common in captivity obviously my um you've got to always check rings always check your rings uh when you're buying birds so that's the first thing i always go to so if there's something that's more unusual right what rings that got on okay that's got the correct size ring on the, the ring doesn't look like it's been touched or anything like that so as far as I'm concerned, this bird's completely legit, and it seems legit. It's closed rung properly as the bird from the nest from captive bred parents. Not only that, as a safety, I also do like to have a chat with the breeder about that. So, you know, how did you breed it? Um, and a bit more information on it previously, because I always want to make sure that I'm never getting into anything like that. All the birds that I keep and have here all of the birds are legit they're closed rung the captive bred and the parents are captive bred so everything is within the law so there's no problems like that so that's so that's one of the things i had to check with the reed bunting with it being a bit of something special but um he's fine he's completely legit so he's hopefully going to a friend um who's who's got a head so so i think that'd be better and then what we can do is we can get some videos hopefully throughout the year see how he's getting on up there and we can do a little bit of an episode maybe with that and um, sadly not one i can travel to because it's a very long way away for for me to to where this uh but these birds are um but either way to be good to see how we get on and do a bit more something that isn't commonly kept like the reed bunting um uh, i'm mark d bowman hi mark nice to have you on the uh, on the live uh, by the way who's who's come from facebook uh, and instagram on here because i never always know if you if you've come onto your youtube because you knew it was on and it was on your youtube recommended page or if you've seen it on facebook and you've come through that way or something like that um i must say as well just for everyone on here as well so when you when you watch a video um if you can please hit the like button because what that does is will open up the audience 
to a much larger range of people because more people are enjoying the video in in as far as youtube is concerned um so when you hit the like button it means it's another rating saying that's a good video um and does that and a lot of people some people don't have uh, a youtube account that's fine but if you can like them please i please like beg you to do so because it opens it up to so many more people more people who could have need the information and more people to learn about the hobby and hopefully join in and that would be great you know trying to get the reach as expanded as possible to get more people in this hobby i mean obviously i absolutely love what i do um and and i'm sure most people in the hobby do as well so it's it's that sort of thing where we can get more people to it because a lot of people don't know about it and it's trying to get people into it especially young people then it's really useful um so on instagram brilliant elliot that fantastic thank you for letting me know i want to i want to make sure that everyone gets that as well because i know some people say they don't see it and i don't know if there's a, a problem there hello from france hi fab uh yeah nice to have you on the um nice to have you on the live seen from facebook coffee matrix oh, brilliant thank you um so so yeah um that's just that's just part of it so whenever you can smash the like button on it because it really makes a massive difference um uh, and i just rec i really do recommend that you, you try and do that um because it just it just helps it really helps um so i'm just trying to um, make sure that more people can join because quite a few people can't i don't know why uh some links for some reason are on some devices aren't always uh accessible which confuses me a little bit um where, 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 where they go onto the link and it it takes them to just like a youtube homepage rather than um the actual page of the video and i don't know if that's something to do with the device it's being used on uh, or anything like that so yeah it, it's a difficult one sometimes um so yeah uh initially so via facebook are oh, brilliant thanks for letting me know josh um so yeah it's just a case of of, of working on that and um getting more people to see it so the next video is then hopefully you might have watched the video that came out this morning which was of the um the national british bird and mule club centenary show of 1996 so it's a look back at the the british birds of the past about 25 years you know, nearly 26 years ago i think it was in the february of 1996 so it would have been nearly 26 years ago uh, but it's a really good art it's a really good insight onto how far the birds have come over the past quarter of a century you know and um, you look at the green finches for example our green finches today in 25 years have the shape the size of them is is, is brilliant um, and i think the color has definitely improved um so when you look back at the, the birds from 25 years ago they're, they're nowhere near as developed as they are today obviously you know they wouldn't be um as they've not been they wouldn't have been kept in captivity as long uh, and you wouldn't have gone from breeding those those lines and stuff and the selective breeding as much so it was great to see that um something that was pointed out to me was the size of the goldfinches in there now i don't have an awful i, I don't have uh, an awful um like massive insight on on what's all happened with the um you know different things like the northern debate of the northern birds um but apparently the goldfinch in that video looked a hell of a lot bigger than did the um um native goldfinches as we have today so i'm wondering if they were they were siberians before the siberians were in like northern classes maybe i don't know um what else we got on here uh how do you choose a good quality food for canaries uh or f f oh, in, in general um it, it's something you've just it's more of a trial and error to be honest um so i i use a, a supplier called bjf feeds they make their own straight mixes as well as supplying uh, a lot of mixes from abroad so versa lagers um Delhi Nature, Bayers, all sorts of stuff like that. And the new pigeon corn as well, which is useful, and a hell of a lot of straight seeds. So I always use them as my source. 
it's not that far away from me either so it's really easy to access um and go there you know in, in a truck and, and and pick up a load of stuff that i need because when you keep this volume of birds um you know it's not pet shops you go to for your feed you've got to go and buy it where it's cheap uh to make it a viable thing because it costs a lot of money you know I'll, i must go through 500 quid worth of seed a year and you've got you want to make that money back thankfully by breeding the birds you do make you know you do sell some on and then you make enough back that it covers your costs as long as it covers my costs that's that's brilliant that's perfect uh, until i get carried away when i buy something that's really expensive and think eh, that was a lot of money um but yeah, so always just look for a, a varied diet in the, in that. So a varied seed makes you want all sorts in there. And also what the seed gives to the birds. So for example, sunflower hearts, your, your fat source. Um, your hemp is a fat source. Linseed fat source. Safflower is a fat source. Um, and then you want your wild seeds for for, for other things and, and which they contain. Blue more is a, a, a natural sedative and painkiller so that's always useful to have not i don't really put that in my mixes but to have it available when you need it is really good um uh, rowan berries i'm always i'm giving a lot of rowan berries at the moment um perfect time of year is when bullfinches are having them wax wings are having them and stuff like that in the wild so my bullfinches are all getting them this time of year the greenies get them uh and the crossbills we know the crossbill which we've got left um because we've not, we're not done much with the crossbills this year so we not, don't keep uh, we've only got one at the moment uh, so he gets them as well and they, they seem to appreciate them so yeah just look in your mixes and look what's what's a good varied diet mix and then it's just a case of trial and error and you might find your birds love one seed mix and they won't touch the other and sometimes that happens um hybrid from greece i love to bring goldfinches so with cordelis cordelis uh bon Balkanesia, uh, green finches, red canaries, and bullfinches. Oh, fantastic, Dimitris. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, I'm not familiar with the breed of um, the subspecies of goldfinch. Um, do you know the? I know that's a Latin name, obviously. Do you know what it would be called? Just basically, what's the English name? Do you know that? Because I, I don't know the. I know the Cordelis Cordelis is goldfinch, but I don't know the subspecies. Um, Manchester City top of the Prem, are they? Or does that mean that? So obviously, I think they were two one, so two nil up against Watford, weren't they? Um, Blumenek went three one. Way awesome. City at top, thirty five points. Liverpool, Blumenek. Tell you what, Chelsea. Well, I mean, when they, I mean, they lost. I don't know. West Ham's getting a good side, aren't they? But, but um, yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea and West Ham was that. I mean, Liverpool only won one nil against Wolves, and that was a late, late goal as well. Um, but yeah, um, I sit at top of the Prem. Yeah, I prefer Liverpool, uh, guys. I am not massive into football. I enjoy watching it, especially international competition. Uh, yeah, I do like Man City, but I'm not, I'm not like a die-hard fan. Just so you know. Um, that was uh, that was back when I first started keeping nineteen ninety six. It's great to see coming back to the hobby now. After long time, I can't get over the size of green for even zebras and budgies. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, they have come a long way. Um, we've got part two of that coming out, and it's only a I think there's um, the part two is only a quarter of an hour. Um, what what we've done there is. Um, that's going to come out on Tuesday, and you're just getting a last look at the show hall. Uh, you look at the top birds on the you know, the winning birds on the top bench now. Terry McCracken does a lot of the interviewing in this video, which is brilliant. Um, we did a Zoom call with with Terry, but um, you know, great, great like that, and it's it's a, a good last close look around at some of the the brilliant birds that are on show at that that show. I mean. I wish there was a, there's a lot of guys I wish I'd met. You know, Derek Hall, No, Grosvenor Ridgeway, and um, loads of uh, loads of names that of, of people who sadly aren't here anymore. Uh, and I'd love to have, to have a chat with them and and um, pick up so much information. Uh, hi, hi. I, I've not got your name um, on that, but yeah, hi. <laughs> um, how did daily routine take, mate? So not that long to be honest because i try and make it as easy as possible so 
I've always got my seed in every single shed, so I don't have to run back and forth to the seed bags. Um, and I keep that in, you know, plastic storage containers sealed so you don't, they don't get damp or any any rodents or anything like that. So it all keeps it safe like that. So probably an hour. Um, a lot of it's me just faffing because I can't leave stuff alone. You know, I think, I go in like, oh, I'd, I'd like to do that. I'd change something. And then, oh, that, that perch is a bit messy. Not noticed that. Right, clean perch. So that, but from a lot of the stuff that's not, that I mean, I spend about an hour every Saturday doing a massive change round. Um, in terms of just everything gets all fresh food, all all um, all, all sort of stuff like that. Uh, water, I usually do waters twice a week. Really, it depends how mucky it is because when you at least when you're showing the birds, they don't seem to. They, obviously, they drink, but they don't mess it up like they do in the breeding season. The breeding season is full of all sorts of crap. You're filling it up every day. You know, you're changing the water every day. Um, but not not really this time of year as much. Uh, but they've always got access to fresh water, and the water's readily, you know, commonly quite often replenished. Um, for that. So, yeah, probably only an hour. Um, you know, spend a good hour on a Saturday. But then there's also all the, the cleaning outs. And I don't do all my cleaning outs on one day because it just takes to, it just, you, you lose a day doing it. So, because I'm at uni and I'm doing a lot of uni from home at the moment um because a lot of it's but just a lot of it's online um you know i might have an afternoon spare so i'll go and clean out one shed and then i'll have an afternoon spare in three days time i'll go and clear out the other shed or, or what have you so it's always changing like that um but overall i'd say an hour a day um golfing to do the balkan signs i've not heard of that but that sounds brilliant what's the di what's the difference in them are they smaller or they're better coloured or something like that. I genuinely don't know. I've never seen them before. Oh, I'm trying to white Norwich to bully head. Why why isn't this being bred? Can't find any picture of blues. I've, it's done small, it's done on small wheels. It, yeah, Brian. So that was an idea I, I, I had in the summer, thinking actually I'd like to try a blue bully mule. Never seen one. Um tried to find photos, never found one, and then spoke to a couple of guys, you know, who've been in the hobby years and like, no, I've never seen a blue bully mule. I'm like, ooh. I tell you what, I'd like my name down. I'm the first one to do that. Obviously, I'm putting it on YouTube because I don't want to hide stuff. I want to be completely transparent. You guys see everything that I do, understand what I do, and then we get to enjoy, you know, the, the fruits of, of of the hard work together. You know, we we get to see. Well, we paired that pair of uh, that uh, bully mule pair together in in October. We've seen them get on. We've seen them now feeding each other, which is great. And then and then hopefully. Hopefully, come about May time. I hope, fingers crossed, we see some young blue canary bullies in the nest, and that'd be fantastic. Um, but best of luck, Brian. I hope it works for you, mate. I'd love to see one. Um, I know, obviously, like blue goldfinch mules, for example, um, they're done a lot more often, but I think when you pair to a white, um, from what I understand, it's like a 50 50 normals and, and, and blues. So you might end up, you know, you might end up with a nest where you've got three chicks in it, and that's probably a good outcome. You've got a nest of three canary bullies in it, you might end up with one being blue and two normals. And then the next nest you'll end up where you've got three blues, and the next you'll end up where you've got a nest of no blues. So it's a bit of a trial and error. And I'm just hoping, hoping drop lucky. I'd love to see a blue one. Um I think. I'm, obviously, I'm trying the white Norwich. Um, in hindsight, after chatting with a couple more guys, it said maybe if you got a blue, a, a, like an absolute yellow feather blue uh, Norwich cock rather than a white, it might have been better because you know it's a guaranteed yellow bird uh, from what you're buying rather than um, your white could be a buff or a yellow. So it's a bit difficult there, uh, but I'm not. I'm not too concerned. Uh, we'll try it. We'll see how we get on. Hopefully, we get something out of them. Um, you breed Algonquin Canary from Portugal? Yes, uh, we we brought in two pairs at Stafford in October, um, so we're going to be doing the two pairs of those guys next year. Uh, it turns out one we were, we were supposed to have two pairs. We had two bird, two cock birds that are variegated, uh, so the quite lighter coloured birds, and then we've got two. Uh, dark birds one which was a definite buff and the other which the breeder told me was a yellow bird 
I, I, I don't know much about hot Portuguese holocaust. because that's the first time I've ever had them. Anyway, turns out uh, that yellow hen started singing. So we ended up with, we got three cock harlequins and one hen, which is a dark bird. So I needed another. So I managed to pick up a hen harlequin. Um, I've not shown it on video because it, it wasn't worth it. I just thought, right, it's, it's clear. I know the guy, who, uh, the, the, the person I had it from. I, I quarantined it and it's fine. So I've put it out of the flies, but it's actually a clear harlequin. It looks like a red dimorphic, genuinely. I was like, no, that's a red dimorphic. He was like, no, genuinely, it's harlequin. This is the parents. I was like, okay, okay. And and the parents were light, um, two variegated ones. It just so happened to manage to drop. I think it I think it might be a ticked bird. I think it's got like one or two dark feathers on it, this yellow, um, this uh Portuguese harlequin hen, but it, it genuinely looks like a red dimorphic, but I know it's not. Uh, so we're doing that, and I'll have a spare Portuguese cockbird. Um, we'll, we'll put it. We'll put him somewhere. Um, would you ever consider getting into African Asian Aussie finch instead of just natives birdaholic? Um, so I've done them in the past. Um, I've done well. I've, I've done all three, not extensively. Don't get me wrong. So I've done weavers, African ones. I've done Indian silver bills. The Aussie finches, I've done red, uh, zebs, uh, gouldians. I've not had any diamond fire tails. I tried to get some for ages, could never get any. Um, Bengalese finches, obviously, Indonesia, but it's not. An, it's, it's, it, the Bengalese finches are not a, a wild bird. It's a, um, it's a domesticated bird. So you never find them in the wild. But uh, society finches, Bengalese finches, but I've done them. Uh, Java sparrows I've done um, oh, I'm trying to think of other things I've done I've definitely done some others um, so I've done a, a, a few of them but I, I don't get me wrong I like them and I'd love a pair of Gordians again but I just I, I, I love the natives too much I, I, I thought about it myself thinking well, how we could have a pair of Gordians there but the problem is the time of year they breed and then the heating and all of that it's it don't fit with the the natives, so unless I went and bought maybe a top pair of zebs to to take on the show bench and have a bit of fun with, or a good pair of gouldians just to enjoy, I don't think I'll really get ever back into them. Yeah, that's unless I manage to get another bird room in, and then we might say, okay, well, that that bit there will do something different with, and we'll go into, I don't know, I'll buy a few zebs, but. I'm not that bothered about them. I prefer the natives, to be honest. That's just me. I, I just prefer them. Um, you might have seen on my Facebook, actually, if you follow my personal Facebook, um, I went bird watching yesterday. I love going bird watching. I just don't get a chance too much anymore because I'm usually doing stuff with my birds. Um, but I love going and watching the native finches in the wild because what it means is, don't get me wrong, the, the ones we have in captivity are completely different. They're Obviously, they're all with it's at the, the closed rung. They're captive bred, and they're from lines of captive bred birds, all captive bred. So, so that they're, they're very different to the wild birds, um, and I think some of the behaviour might be slightly lost in them when you compare them to the wild birds. So, what I do is when I when I've gone and watched wild birds, for example, I go and watch some wild red poles feeding on an acer tree, and they're feeding on the um, the little cones. Then I think that that's really good to see because the red poles I've got at home they don't always get that opportunity to do that. So then what I'd like to do is get some ASIF. So then for my captive bred red poles, we put some in and watch them do that. And it takes a bit of learning, but they'll, they'll pick it up and, and tune into that natural behavior again. I love doing that. So yeah, I went bird watching yesterday and we saw um, a woodpecker, great spotted woodpecker. Like, oh, it, it was brilliant. I managed to film it down the lens of my phone, down, so my lens of my phone, through a pair of binoculars onto the feed it was brilliant i can't believe i managed to do it but yeah um, we had a nut hatch on the land on the car as well literally i'm sat in my car and a nut hatch comes I land on the car i was like oh my god i'm scrambling for my phone um and then it jumps onto the floor picks up a piece of suet and then shoots off it was brilliant um but yeah that so that, that's with that uh, Oliver, how what happened to the vitamin test you was trying out the birds hi peter um all good the only thing is, is with with it is that from what i've seen the guy who bought it off doesn't have any left 
So what I don't want to do is say, right, this here's the link, everyone, but it's sold out. So when I'm, I'm waiting for it to come back up because I can't find it on eBay, which is where I got it from. Um, so, yeah, um, that, that that's what happens. I can't find it, the supplier, and I don't want to tell everyone what it is if there not be any available. That That's the only thing is I don't want to – promote something that's not, not not available because then it's no it's no use um you know great you know you, you you enjoy the vitamins but no one else can buy it so i'm one and wait until that comes back up i'm not seeing it up yet um but i'll let you know i'll tell you what, i might get in contact with the supplier actually after this and and see what we can do um are you ever used s76 on your birds or guardian angel by bird care company Yes, I've done S76. Um, I've not tried Guardian Angel. S76 is really good for um, respiratory problems with um, with finches. So mainly bullfinches I've done that with. Bullfinches seem to be quite a problem uh, with, with breeding and respiratory issues. So I've done two things with them. I've tried S76, which is generally all good. If S76 doesn't work, and that's usually my first point of call, then it's on to Thailand. Um, S76, I can't remember. I've not used it in ages because we've not had a problem. Touch wood. Um, but S76 is, is um, I think it's a 10-day treatment. I, you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong there, but that's worked well for me in the past, usually with gapes and mainly air sac. My, I don't know if it can do... It with that uh, ornithosis or um, something like that, but it's probably can have with them. Uh, Air seventy six is good, definitely would recommend it for the guardian angel. I just haven't tried that. What does the guardian angel do? Does anyone know? Because I'd, I'd like to, I would like to have that, have a go with that. I've just not tried it, um, and I don't want to get it if I'm not going to use it. Um, if I've got a bird that's got a problem, right, I'll buy some and try it. So, yeah, um, Ollie, I thought on your bullfinch hybrid plasma next year. I remember my birdman saying if you put a bully cock in a cage and place near the cage flying when the hen squats finch may tread. Uh, yes, Mark. So I, I've heard the same. Um, my problem would be doing that is where I'm going to have the bullfinches, uh, the bullfinch hybrid pairs. I could put the bullfinch cock in the in the safety do the safety door, uh, like the safety porch behind. Uh, but I have to have him in a show cage. But the problem being then is that you have it in a show cage, and then it's behind the the wall, which is there. I don't think they'd hear it, or they might not much. Then that will rely on him to whistle. So I don't know if that'd work um, in the situation I'm creating to put the bully hybrid pairs in. I'm open to the idea and I probably might try it if we have problems. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, I might try it. I, I've definitely I've seen it happen with canaries. I've tried it myself with canaries. That's how we managed to breed the Goldie Mule this year. Um, is we got the pair of Norwich together and we was getting no full eggs at all from the Norwich. So we got the goldfinch cock I'd got in at the time, the native Goldie put him in with the Norwich hen left them for about two or three weeks. She went to nest, built the nest up. And then I got the Norwich cog, which we had her with, put him like against the cage front, like in a, in a show cage. And then the Norwich hen would come over, she'd squat, the Goldie would jump on and the Norwich cock, who she was originally paired with, would do that. And that's how we managed to breed them. I've, I've not tried it with boys. So we'll, we'll, Mark, we'll give it a go and hopefully it works. Um, but I, for how long, I don't know. I, I don't, what I don't want to happen is the bully hens be distracted from actually getting on with what they need to do with the finch they're the with and be wanting to get with the bullfinch cock because then that would ruin everything. Uh, but, yeah, uh, any hawfinch seen? No, Elliot. Um, I've been wanting to see a hawfinch since I first saw the, like first saw photo of him in a book at about three years old. I've still got the book. Um I've never seen a hawfinch in the wild before. I've seen five in my whole life, all of which have been on the show bench. Never seen any um, any more than that. I think I've seen one at a show in 2016, one at a show in 2017, two at Stafford national exhibition 2019 which were friends birds which weren't for sale they were underneath a, a thing uh which were being picked up oh and then two at the Lancashire. so that's six i've only ever seen six never any in the wild um 
apparently they're about um, locally enough to me, but I've never seen any. The only place I know of them is Forest of Dean in, is it border of Wales? I don't know. I'll have to go down there and have a look, but they're obviously quite a, an unusual bird anyway. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I'm in a similar spot with finches and gay parrots, and it needs to build flights with shed finches the moment I keep track of stilts and connors. Wow, you keep stilts. That's brilliant. I've I've only ever seen a few of those at a show. Um, I have a clue how you breed them, but that's brilliant. Now, thank you for sharing it. If you want to drop me a message on Facebook or Instagram, I'd love to have a chat with you about breeding the stilts. Um, not, 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 I've not done terracos. Um, I think they're nice, but they don't, it won't work for me at the moment. Um, Connors, I, I'd love to have a go with them. Um, we truck we the best closest I've done is cockatiels and linolated parakeets to Connors. Um, I imagine it's not a crap lot different, you know, not too hard, but I'd love to have a go with them maybe in the future. Bird watching, but with my birds in college, it makes it a hard time. Right, time for it now sadly yeah um though that's one of the things is i'm like i can't go bird watching when my birds at home need something doing and i, I the amount of time i spend with the birds at home for the, the amount of time i should i need to spend with them so the amount of time that i need to have them in showcases i need to feed them i need to water them is fine but i just find stuff to faff about with and i end up doing that i don't even know that's why my birds are spoil and and and, and stuff like that but yeah i see something like Hey, that might work and then I'll, i might spend an hour in there thinking if i pair that to that that would work well oh, yeah we'll try that and oh god i end up faffing about all sorts like that I and mean, you'll see on friday's video uh next sorry not next friday uh next saturday's video we um we've had a change with the mule and hybrid pairs um i'll give you a quick overview now you'll see them uh, the completed sort of ones um in, in uh, next saturday but uh, we lost the goldfinch cock um who was in with the, the yellow norwich hen uh sadly just lost him um i think he was it was an older bird anyway he was about three i think um and, and what have you and he, he just sadly perished so so we lost the goldie cock uh, so i don't have any goldies anymore um and then it meant that we got this norwich hen i needed to try a mule pair at least one that is easier uh famous last words as you're not going to about to hear um because then i was like well i could do with a pair of native bullies for next year so we can produce a few more bully ends in case we want to try it or to sell on some bully hens for other people to try bully hybrids and what have you and, and make sure that they're not all going to waste um so i've decided to split up the crossbill bully hybrid pair it's a difficult pair anyway and i got an over year crossbill with the young bullfinch and they just they weren't looking at each other. They weren't even bothered by each other. I just thought, let's we'll try them with something different. So we've put the crossbill with the Norwich hen. Um, yeah, I say an easier mule. I don't think it will be, but if we can get one out, we're brilliant. I mean, crossbill mules are beautiful. I mean, they're the ones at the Lancashire. I was like, look at those, absolutely stunning. Um, so we're trying crossbill mule next year. And then with that, I was thinking, well, you know that's four that's four mule hybrid pairs i try and aim for five so anyway i thought well we've got the arctic red pole i can't get a cock bird for it i don't know if she'll even feed so i thought you know what we're gonna do arctic red pole mule so i've put the arctic red pole hen in with a a, a black proper yellow feathered irish fancy and i was i thought about doing it with a norwich and then it ended up where i thought well We'll try a mini mule just out of, I'd like to see what they look like first and at least make it easy because she, with her feet being screwed up rather than holding, I thought, let's just do something that's going to be as easy as possible. So I thought I'll put it with an Irish. So she's in with an Irish cockbird at the moment. Whether we're going to put them in a cage and do them separately as a as their own pair or whether we put them then into a spares flight and they'll have bonded through the winter and we might get some arctic red pommels that way i don't know um but that's what it's looking like and you'll see those pairs soon um s76 is treatment over four weeks oh right okay you're you are thank you um i'm gonna say i've not used it in ages uh, and i don't i don't, don't use it that much either so it's one of that i've not used it i think since january of this year 
uh, when the Siberian bully hen um, went a bit under the weather, and then and then I used it. So it's been a while. Apparently, the garden angel helps stress when birds are moved, mainly using parakeets, and some people swear by it. I'll have to give that a go. I didn't think of that. Um, might be something useful then for. I mean, I'm, I'm debating with the idea, do I rent a table at Stafford Spring Bird Show? But I don't know what birds I'm going to have to go by that point. There's always going to be the final selection because I'm always keeping more than I need at the moment in time. Because if we lose anything, we've got source, you know, we've got birds to to pull them straight from. Um, so, so I'm thinking about that and... Um, we might have a table. I don't know. If not, it'll be a case of just I'll text some birds and I'll meet in the car park, something like that for, for them. But yeah. Um, but I actually, if I were to do that, I might try guardian angel on them and, and see how we get on with it. And hopefully it works. I'm, I'm picking up a few more birds anyway. I think we've got based on what my current plans are for the breeding season, we've got, three pairs of red poles that i need to bring in a pair of greenies and then a special pair which i mentioned earlier just so you know is an overview for anyone who's not seen that i managed to get a pair of birds i've been after them for six years it's not twice because we've already got some i dropped very lucky a friend had got some and i'm i'm hopefully getting them after christmas i'm not saying any more than that because you um I don't want to let people down. If I, if it doesn't go through, if something goes wrong, I don't want to let people down. I'd rather I'd rather tell everyone once I've got them um, and tell you a bit more about them because they're a bit different. Uh, uh, just drop to say hi. I have to go on for oh, Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Muley Man. Uh, obviously, I've been chatting with you on Instagram anyway, so no problem. I uh, hope you enjoy uh, Is it the rest of your evening. If Yeah, probably um guardian angel uh, i believe has changed name to angel 40 don't know why also people immune booster help boost health i know the same with hawfinch but never in real life yeah hawfinches i've never never seen one in the wild only ever in uh, in a show and that's it that's literally a six birds i've ever seen of hawfinches three of which i think might have been the same bird so yeah um wow what do you make that yeah Tell you what, thank God it was water, not not booze. Um, yeah, so yeah, Guardian Angel. I've not tried it myself. I'm gonna have to try it. I tried that 76 from a fives. It worked all birds bar one. So recently, just got Moxie Vet Plus. It only needs one treatment every three months, and, and it covers a host of worms as well as mice. Brilliant. Well, that's something um, I'm gonna have to try then. I'm. I know F seventy six. I've only ever used it for the purpose of uh, respiratory issues in in, um, in 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 bullfinches mainly. That's the only thing I've ever had respiratory problems with. Just seems to be a problem with the bullies and only ever Siberian bullfinches from what I've had. Not sure why. Um, some guys say when they keep the birds out in flights, don't make a difference. They're fine. As soon as you bring them in the shed, they start coughing, and maybe it's dust. Maybe it's just a lack of air circulation. I don't know. Uh, so I'll, um, I'll have to read a bit more into my S76. I haven't used it in a while. Um, I'll, DM you on Insta I'll DM you on Insta about the easiest bird I've kept. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Birdaholic. Uh, I know someone who could get you some Arctic Red Pulse Horfinch if you want, and maybe more Horfinches. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, yeah, there's, there's a guy you I spoke to about Arctic Red Pulse. He, I think he put 25 pairs up for sale of the Arctic. So um, I messaged him and they're just out of my price range. I, I, I considered it and think, well, I could do, I mean, I could get a pair, but the price which they were at, as well as me thinking, well, I, I don't know what room we're going to have. Don't worry, I can always squeeze pairs in. I'm always thinking, well, if I do seven pairs of lesser red poles instead of eight, I don't think that's a massive sacrifice for a pair of Arctics, but it's then that an Arctic's not going to breed in the same amount of room as a lesser would have. Lesser, the lessers we've got today in captivity are, used to people beyond belief they've been captive bred for many 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 generations so breeding them in a, a in a cage similar to how you would breed a canary almost i mean i breed my my red poles in what 30 inch double breeders and there's no problems at all i mean you don't really even have to put them in uh 
you don't even really have to put the cover around the nest sites for red poles for lesser red poles or common red poles anymore because it don't make a difference and um, they're just as they are um so yeah so so that's the thing with lesser red poles they're so different to the arctics now i think that an arctic can need a much bigger cage and then it's right where does that go well i've already got a pair of twites in now which i've been wanting for ages so i thought right well we're gonna we're gonna do it with a pair of twites um, and, and and what have you so yeah but we've got the arctic red pole hen it was gifted to me by a friend because of her feet problems if i can if we breed an arctic red pole mini arctic red pole mule with an irish cock that i've got awesome if we don't i'm not i'm not too worried um and it's a bird that might be useful for me to have so if my friend does need it back then i've got it here available to him you know if he's got well actually ollie i've got room here do you want me to give it a try i'd happily give it in bag he gave me the bird back it bird he was kind enough to do that he's given me birds in the past i've given him birds can't go wrong with that so we'll we'll, we'll um well you know we'll, we'll keep the arctic for the moment um but if he needs it back he can have it back uh you know he's been kind enough to give it me anyway so if he ends up where he's got a cock bird that can go with it or something that's fine by me and if we use it for arctic red pole mule and hybrids then we do and that would be good if you put the arctic red pole with a native that half chat uh, yes it is elliot um the, the thing is with the the red poles now in captivity is that i'd, I'd say you never the arctics are they're all right at the moment i'd say that the arctics are all pretty much pure arctic red poles um there a lot of them of which in the uk are from recently imported birds um from 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 uh, the continent so belgium uh, austria netherlands and people over there who keep them as to the the background of those i don't know um so so the arctics are generally pure the lessers and the mealies I, I don't think you can say they're pure they're not they're not a pure lesser red pole and they're not a pure mealy red pole they've got ancestors of both species in there um well the thing the thing is is that a um a, a, the the red poles as well they're they're all under what um is it cardelius flamme or something like that um, but either way, they're all sort of the same species, and then the mealy, the lesser, and the the mealy, the lesser, the Arctic, and the Greenland are sort of subspecies. I think there might be a slight change in there where it kind of a little bit of a bracket out with species, but they're so closely related, they're all fertile with each other. So you just end up where, yeah, it don't it don't work. So yeah, the the, the, the half chats you don't want to breed an Arctic with a lesser you. Your problem, you just end up with problems with it. Um, being the twice in the flight, Ollie, you've seen a guy breeding hawfinch in large case on Facebook. Fantastic, stuff. yeah. Um, if you might have seen the same thing, so uh, I think it's Mike Stevens, he um, he put a photo up on the crossbill breeders group on Facebook yesterday. He's got he's, he's got his hawfinches on eggs first of December, brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Um, we don't know if they're full, we don't know if the eggs are full, hopefully. They are, and that'd be brilliant for him. But if they're not, then it still is is that. Um, so the hawfin, so for hawfinches in in cages, I think it's brilliant. Um, I've seen guys in Malta breeding them in cages, uh, but again, there's so little information on breeding hawfinches anyway. Bernard Williams's website. I was talking to Bernard the other day in the Zoom room episode that's going to be coming out in a few weeks. Um, he bred hawfinches in six by three flights, I think. Um, I'd love a pair of finches. Absolutely, would love a pair. But again, such a hard thing to get hold of. Um, so yeah, it, it's one of the things where I think the hawfinch has been bred now enough generations. It seems by a lot of the guys over in Italy and Malta that they're breeding in cages. You know, not small cages, but I think they're about four feet wide. Cage about eighteen inch by eighteen inch, and they're breeding them, which is fantastic. Um, for the twites, I was considering putting them in the flight, but after chatting with the guy, I got them from. And other people who've bred them, I've got a cage. The the double height cages I've got on my, um, which we, we we've got the red poles in at the moment. I'm going to put the twites in the bottom of that. It's about three foot by three foot by eighteen inch. I think it should be sufficient enough for the the twites. They're relatively steady birds anyway. They're quite used to people. They're brilliant. They're like canaries to be fair. Um, 
in terms of their, their behaviour um, towards people. They're not bothered about you being there. They're lovely little birds. So, yeah, um, and we're going to try the twice in that. Uh, I think it'd be better, and I've heard that twice can be a problem when it comes to the cock bird can batter the hen or something like that. So, yeah, just something on that. So that's what I'm going to do with the, the twice. Um so good, not bullseye with inbreed. Um, no, no, Ali, um, that, that's it exactly with the, the red poles. You don't want to breed anything with an Arctic. You don't want to be crossbreeding blessers, red poles anyway. But um, the thing is with the Arctic red poles is that Arctic red poles are very light coloured. They've got a very small beak and um, they're quite unusual in captivity anyway. You know, there's not a load of them. So, um you breed a lesser with an arctic you're going to make it a darker bird um and ruin the color you're going to make its beak bigger so it's quite obvious it's a half chat or it's a crap looking lesser because if you put it then into lesser lines you're going to dilute the color of your lessers and get light colored ones which is no good um, and then you breed a, a lesser into a line of arctics you just end up where you've got darker arctics for quite a few generations and the beak size problems so yeah, never, you know, just don't just don't crossbreed them. Um, apparently, the Greenland red pole, I've never seen one, but they're massive. Apparently, I've seen, I've seen, I've been told they're brilliant, um, but that's as far as it goes. Apparently, like the size of a greenie, bigger than a mealy, and their mealies are massive at the moment. The ones at the, the Lancashire, I mean, these mealy red poles bigger than some at Greenfinch are brilliant. Um, oh, oh, bird room, evening, mate. Yeah, hi, Shane. How, how, how are you, mate? Yeah, not spoke to you in a few weeks. Uh, what other native finches co breed commonly in cages now? Um, so, Josh, pretty much anything, to be honest. Um, for finch wise, siskins, red poles, greenies. I've bred green. I've bred greenies in blooming wire cage double breeders in in, in the, the 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 small finch room where we keep all the red poles and stuff. Those cages on the back wall um, where we've got the canary. We breed the canaries, and I've bred greenies in them before. The, don't get me wrong, these are the small type green finches, not the massive exhibition ones about two years ago. Um, there's no problems with that. Bullfinches, you can, mainly Siberian bullies are better. I know Matt bred his native bullies in a good sized cage this year, um, so it can be done. Crossbills, you can cage breed. Uh, again, bigger cages, hawfinches, at least in Malta, I've seen the cage breed in them. Um, well, chaff is cage breed fine, usually. Um, brambles. Brambles are one where I think, I imagine they're very similar to chaffies, probably better in a flight. Um, then you go to things like yellow hammers. I know one guy, I think Sean Fitzpatrick bred them a few years ago, yellow hammers in a cage. I don't know any more details other than that. All I know is they're in a cage. That, that could have been, that probably was a very big cage. So, yeah, I've heard one story once about a guy breeding brambles in a normal wooden double breeder in his bedroom, which is like brilliant. But yes, yeah, so I'd say pretty much any British finch now will breed in the cage. The size of the cage will differ. You know, um, green, you know, red poles I've bred in, in cages this big. No problem. Red poles, fantastic. Um, greenies, not what you don't, at least smaller type green is not really a problem uh the big green finches like i've got now um putting them in a big one is not a, an option really um so yeah uh what are the native features yeah the, uh, do you do a video on whore finches uh i've not done a video really on whore finches yet elliot um we touched on it in the zoom room with terry mccracken uh, Terry's bred hawfinch in the past and he's hand reared hawfinches. Well, not something a lot of people have kept and or successfully bred. So there's not a lot, an awful lot of information on there. The best thing I can tell you to do if you want to, more information on breeding hawfinches is go on to, let me get this right. Bernard Williams has got a website, um, which is brilliant. I really like it. Um, let me, I'm just getting it up for you now. Uh, www.birdinfo.co.uk and um, that's Bernard Williams' website for reading basically everything in British Finch terms. Um, and mules and hybrids and a few soft bills he's bred in the past as well. So, um, yeah, there's a bit more information on that. 
we did the Zoom room with Bernard uh, a few days ago. That's going to be coming out in probably not next Tuesday. Not this Tuesday coming next Tuesday will be the first part of that. But it's quite it's been a really long episode um with Bernie. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely loved it. Um so you know, do 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 that with, with Bernard Williams and, and and we'll get a video up on that soon with the Hall Finchers like um and a bit of his experience on that. But there's again, he doesn't keep them anymore, so we can't see any, you know, he's not he's, it's like he's not said, oh, I've read this many this year, it was crap. Um I uh, think the guy with the Hawfinch called Jim Bullfinch. What site? Uh, the guy posted with them eggs in December. Uh, the site's called uh, Crossville Breeders on Facebook. I'll get you uh, get it up on here for you. Um, but yeah, he, he literally. I think yesterday evening he posted he he got Hawfinches on eggs, which I think is brilliant um, for this time of year. Anyway, uh, Crossbill Breeders. There you are. It's that site on Facebook. Um, obviously, guys, these aren't my photos, like, um, but the, this is um, a bit of that on the whole finches. The you know, so you can see there, uh, wherever the date is on that, is whole finches breeding in December, um, and that was a few days ago. So that's brilliant, really. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, Jim Bullfinch, I've seen he put something up. I, I think it was this year. I think he bred a hawfinch or two. I don't know if he bred them in flights. I don't know if he bred them in cages. I know all I know is he got a pair or two, and I think he got two cockbirds last year. Hi mate, hope you're well. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, Eagles Way Dogs. Uh, Alexander Reeves. Hi Oliver. Uh, hi Alexandra. And um, yeah, thank you very much again just for the Harlequins. Absolutely love them, mate. The brilliant birds. Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, my dad's on as well. I like the new blue shirt, Oliver. Thanks, Dad, for watching. She's in the other room. Brilliant. Um, thanks, Ollie. Great live, and thanks for answering the questions. No problem, Josh. Thanks for having you know. Thanks for coming on, uh, and 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 what have you, and, and asking questions. If anyone's got any more questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, on this, any questions or anything like that, I've spoke about a few, quite a few things in this. Um, Usually on the show, so my next show will be the Staffordshire uh, British Bird Mule Hybrid Club on the 16th of January. Um, a while, a while, yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's six weeks away, um, and and what and I, I, there's still a lot of work needs doing with the um, uh, with some of the birds. You know, I, I, so I came I've come out with a green uh, a video even on uh, improving the green finch training because it after talking with a couple of the judges at the show um they pointed a few faults out of the green finches down to training uh, and and stuff like that so the greenies need a bit more work on them it's a case of just staying them down a bit especially the what you know the better cock bird he was quite jumpy at the end um and they're not standing up on the perch as much. So I'm, I'm still working on that. And if you've watched that video, uh, which came out on Tuesday, then you'll see a bit more on how I'm improving that and working on it. And so it should be good. And uh, yeah, so so that's that. And then the, I think it's the Staffordshire on the 16th of Jan and Nantwich on the 30th of Jan. And then that's the show season over. So I've only had three shows this year, which is a shame because I usually try and get to more. Um, but it's with the avian flu at the moment. I'm being careful at the moment with it, um, it, it with what, which shows I go to. Um, and then some of them, I, I, I enjoy going to the CBS shows, my local CBS. I always try and support them, but their show dropped the same day as the Lancashire. And with it dropping the same day as the Lancashire, then kind of bugged it up because I already sent my things out and I couldn't, sadly couldn't make it to their, their show, which was a shame, but I'd usually do CBS shows as well. And obviously the Yorkshire's not been on this year, which is one of the local specialist shows for myself as well. Um, when's part two of the National British Bird Mule Hybrids? Uh, hi, Shane. It's it's on uh, Tuesday, 6 p.m. That's coming out. Um, it's not a much, it's not a massively long part two. So I know today's was about 40, 45 minutes. That's only about 15 minutes. But it was, with, with how the video was constructed, um, it came in two parts on the on the disc. 
I'll show you here. So this is what I got. This is what I was given kindly by Rob, Rob Evans. I need to return this to Rob uh, now that we've got them uploaded, but I want to make sure everything's smooth first. So that first part went out today. People have watched it. And as far as I'm aware, I mean, I've watched through it, but I want to make sure it's all you know, clear, on that, clear on that as well. But yeah, that's this is the master copy of it, um, which I'm, I've you know been kindly bor borrowed. Um, and when it came in two parts, so the next part's about fifteen minutes long. You're looking at all the other birds which are left, and it, you know, so you're looking at all the birds on the top bench with that. I know there's a brilliant like song thrush in it, greenies, red pole, um, sorry, goldfinch as well. There's a fantastic goldfinch. Uh, so yeah, that'll be about fifteen minutes, um, and then we'll be next Saturday on to a bit of a December update on the birds, a bit of a change to the mule and hybrid pairs and stuff like that. I, I tell you what, Shane, I need to watch your your recent video. I've just been busy, really busy today, doing all sorts of stuff. So I haven't had a chance to watch it, but I'll probably try and watch it this evening uh, on your mule and hybrid pairs and see what you're doing. I love to see what everyone else is doing. It gets me all excited. Like, oh, I'd love to see a youngster off of that. That'd be brilliant. You know, it's like. Dave Cochran, uh, we're in Ireland, bred a blue greeny mule. I've never seen one before. I've, 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 actually, I've looked before. Obviously, I've not been in it that long, but the point is is that I've searched for it on the internet as well and can't find a blue greeny mule. Um, so, yeah, but it's, it's, it's nice to see uh, see one. Hopefully, he'll produce another one this year. I know he was saying that this one's a buff birded bred, uh, so hopefully he produces a uh, a yellow cock bird, a uh, yellow blue cock bird, which would be brilliant, a uh, blue green mule. Trevor Baker. Oh, hi, hi Trevor. Thanks for coming in the live. Um, I can see we've got 22 thumbs up there as well. So if you can, guys, just put a thumbs up on this and it'll leave, uh, it'll get more people uh, to see this video, a larger reach. Um, and that's genuinely how it works. When you like the video, it's another higher rating on the video. And then through that higher rating, the video is then put on more people's recommended home pages on YouTube. More people see the video. More people get to learn about things like I doing this, watch the videos, and it shows the hobby to more people. So whenever you can, you know, please, every time you go on a video, if you can, hit the like button. It makes a huge difference. You'll, you don't believe it. Um, so, so, yeah, also, guys, there's a super chat option. It's up to you if you want to do it. Oh, thank you, Trevor. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, but there's a super chat option. You can donate to the channel through that. I don't expect you to, but if you want to make a donation, it always just goes into production costs and um, upkeep and, and things like that. And, and it's very, very much appreciated, but it's up to you. Keelan Moore, has there ever been, has there been many Hawfinch hybrids? Hi, Keelan. Um, no, no, uh, never, ever a, high, a Hawfinch hybrid. Uh, that's one um to to still be done and um, i was talking to uh bernard williams about um hawfinch uh hawfinch hybrids and stuff and bernard wants to do the crossbill hawfinch uh hybrid um he's not had any luck so far uh and it's one that he still wants to try and do so it'll be a case if he can get a hawfinch hen which he was saying to me he thinks that the hawfinches um he imagined that it'll be very similar to chaffinches in that um you have to use the hen or the uh, because the cock bird won't fill legs and um obviously none's ever been bred so we don't know that yet but it would be interesting to see um if that works and if that is the case um and hopefully fingers crossed one might be bred um it would be interesting to see if they are possible because uh, the, the so i think i'm gonna have to hopefully pronounce this right it's called cockathrus genus um or something like that. The genus in which Hawfinch is in there, I think they're the only one in it other than Evening Grosbeaks, um, with it, which are the next closest relative to the, the, the this Eurasian Hawfinch. Uh, I think there's a Chinese Hawfinch as well, but I don't know what sort of path that follows. It might be very similar and be a subspecies of the main Hawfinch, but um, it's quite a distinct thing. I've worked out what's the closest related to Hawfinch and I can't tell people because I want to try and do it first. Um, but it might be very, very hard to do. Well, okay, sorry, it will be very, very hard to do. Um, I've spoke to one person about it who said, basically, your problem is with compatibility. Hawfinches, when you breed Hawfinches, from what I've been told, is that they you need um, 
a dominant hen if there's cockbirds dominant he'll batter the hen and, and, and then you end up with problems and they won't fill eggs or anything like that having the hen be the dominant bird um and and sort of rule that pairing is the better one because then she will mate with the cockbird when she wants to and the cockbird that's his only job if it's the other way around then the hen might be bullied off the nest bullied into trying to mate with him and then she won't be ready and she'll just get battered so that happens with them which is a shame um so it's very difficult i think it's going to be difficult to produce any hawfinch hybrids maybe the only way of checking if it is possible so it's not a crap load of failed attempts would be like ai but you know artificial insemination like but that's it um so it'd be interesting but I don't know. I never knew that. Way. Oh, yeah, I presume that was with the, th the thumbs up, Shane. Yeah. So every time when you put a thumbs up on a video, the YouTube algorithm rep recognizes that to say this is a higher rated video, essentially. So then they put it onto the home page and the recommended page for people. Um, and then it means more people can watch it. So that's that's how it all that's how it all goes down. And um, obviously, subscribers, as your subscribers increase anyway, the reach gets out to more people, but it also helps get your videos on the homepage. That's why it's so difficult to build an audience. Um, sometimes is that your op overall reach, especially when you've got no, you know, when you first start off and you've got no subs, it's very, very difficult. Now, thankfully, with how we started doing this is... Um, is when we sort of putting the videos out and stuff and it's going on Facebook and Instagram and things like that, is that people are going from that and there's another source of people are already following. So it's very hard to get this started, but once you get the ball rolling a bit, it makes a difference. So every like you put on this video means more people see it. So it's really helpful. So whenever you go onto a video you watch on my channel or anyone's channel for that matter, just press the like button, it really goes a long way. Um, what types of seed are uh, supposed to be in sealed bag of germinate seed germinate to be germinated? Thanks, Tonio. Um, so there's a bit of all sorts: um, rape, mung beans, um, safflower, I believe, as well, are the main three which are put in germinated seed. They don't. There's not any that you have to. You know, it's not saying this is your germinated seed mixers, but they seem to germinate best and get the best results uh, and the cheap seeds because when you're germinating it and you're rearing young birds on it, it they go through so much it's unreal um and i buy 20 kilo sacks of germinated seed the the people i source the seed from i, I always buy their own mix as well because it's cheaper and it's just as good so yeah um are you still in school um no no i'm i'm at uni um well I'm studying you at uni, uh, but I live at home and do my studying from home because most of it is all online. It's pretty much all online, and the uni I go to is not far away. So I just drive in. It's easier, and it means it costs me a lot less, and I get to keep the birds. So it's a win-win for me. Um, however, have you seen mix announcement for Bullfinch? Someone bred this mix last year in the UK. Very hard to do. Hi, Gary. Um yeah, I've seen, I think, three or four photos of Mexican house finches, cross bull finches. Um, I don't, I, I've had Mexican house finches before, but only a pair and never bred them. I, th I think there might be a difference in when the breeding seasons line up. Um, don't quote me on that, but there might be. Um, and I think the Mexican house thing is, in, is still on the Fralinga Day uh, sort of family, family group. Um, so pretty much you can crossbreed all of them with exceptions and um, as we've seen and obviously if if there's a big gap between evolution between them it's going to be much harder to do saying that um green finches are very 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 bottom of that and chaff inches are very very tops and they do you can produce hybrids so not always the case but it depends how they've evolved um but yeah mexican house finch uh bully is, is a nice hybrid obviously sadly it's it's one that's you, you, you're not going to show it because there's no classes on the show bench for it. I do think there should be, you know, we have these British bird shows, but I do think, you know, something like a half British bird hybrid, I think that would be interesting. I know a guy who I spoke to on Instagram who's bred black siskin cross Siberian goldfinch accidentally, um, and he bred a few of them in there. That's stunning hybrids. And it's one of those where I think if you could do any other variant British hybrid and which which takes into account 
yeah, you, you know, you, your uh, other European species, South American species like siskin species, and maybe you did, I don't know, red siskin cross goldfinch. That's a that's a lovely hybrid, and I'd like to see those on the show bench. But it's one of those where as soon as you start letting things in like that, then it could get a bit nuts. I think now I could be completely wrong on this, but someone did a um, cardinal cross bullfinch. I don't know. I think it was that, or it could have been something completely different. Um, but that would be interesting. I'd love to see something like that. Um, we had to ask about the family of Hawfinch, but you answered that kind of already. <laughs> no, no, no worries, Elliot. Um, yeah, the Hawfinch is on a, a, a bracket that's distant out anyway. And then um, evolutionary terms, there's, I think there's two species in it, which is the Hawfinch and the Evening Grosbeak. You know, it's like pine crossbeaks. They're not the same as an evening crossbeak. I don't know why they're on the same bracket as gro of crossbeaks. Um, and then hawfinch, I think, divides out into European hawfinch, Chinese hawfinch. I think there's another type, but I don't know. Manu should arrive in tomorrow and get it set up for, uh, quick, finally getting into birds. Learned lots of you and Shane, Matt. Thanks for everything you do, pal from Ireland. Wish me luck. That's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the kind words, Kieran. Hopefully you've enjoyed you've enjoyed this watching this anyway the live stream um and and thank you know thank you for supporting the channel uh, and stuff like that obviously shane and matt's videos are, are great as well you can learn a lot from i think the three of us to be honest um obviously matt is a, d d does a lot anyway he visits a lot of people and there's an absolutely brilliant like bank of knowledge through matt and um, through matt's channel through that Shane's videos excellent great seeing a lot of the things Shane talks about obviously Shane's been in it a long time as well so we can talk about it from his personal experience and then that works great in that you're learning firsthand from Shane and Shane's done it a long time and uh, you know I know that that his, his father did that as well so Shane Shane knows an awful lot which is brilliant and, and then there's the myself first generation bird keeper I've been in it what three four years with the British natives um Cage bird breed keeping six years, overall bird keeping. Jesus Christ, it's been nine years. I keep forgetting I'm 20 next year, and I'm like, as far as I'm aware, I'm still fifth, well, not even 15, up at 13 up here uh, in maturity. Um, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's. Um, I, what, I, what I like to do with, with my videos and share is I always I like to share what I'm doing and this is what I'm doing, mate, and, and it's a case of making your judgment on what you're doing if you're picking up tips and stuff like that. Uh, and I like to share what other people might have told me, providing that's all right with them, um, to get it out there on a larger on a larger stage, a larger audience and stuff. And I'm no expert. I'm never going to be an expert. Uh, and I don't think anyone can really be classed as an expert because everyone's learning still. Um, and there's still so much you think you, you might miss and, or, you know, and pick up. Um, even the guys who've probably been doing it years, I'm sure they still learn a thing or two every year. So it's one of those where it's it's based on experience. I don't have a lot of experience um, compared to a lot of the guys, but what I, what I do have is a, a, a lot of information coming my way which I can then redistribute out to everyone. And uh, once I, I understand it and make sure it all comes out correctly um, and, and stuff like that. And I really enjoy doing this. People obviously enjoy the videos and love seeing this sort of stuff. And uh, hopefully you, you all do anyway. And, and um, it'd be interesting to see how it goes. And I, and I look forward to, you know, when I document things like that. So my series Breeding British Birds Season 1 uh, started what? First, first week in April, ended last week in August or something like that. This year takes us from the initial pairing of the birds to the moult. Um, and you get to follow that week on week to see what's happened, how the birds are getting on, um, and development there. And then, and then also problems there because, you know, there's no point in saying it all goes smoothly and it's all it's all a walk in the park because it's not it's hard it's it's hard breeding naked but it's, hard. it's not easy breeding birds in general some breed easier than others you know canaries you can chuck a male and a female in the cage and they'll breed for you pretty much natives are a lot difficult yeah a lot more difficult and very different from each other red poles breeding cages 
brambles really kind of breeding flies. I've not had brambles. I'd like a pair, but not yet. Not yet. We, we've already got a pair of something special coming in after Christmas. Another pair. I keep saying this. I'm like, I said to myself, I'm cutting down this year. We don't have siskins anymore because I didn't have a good time with siskins um, this year. Nothing against siskins or anything. They're lovely birds. I just didn't get on with them well from my experience. So I thought, right, I want to try something different. Goldfinches, but not not bothering with at the moment. Um, so yeah, so I'm like, right, we'll focus on the greenies and red poles. We'll do a few more and hybrid pairs, uh, and we'll have the canaries as feed as well. It's ended up weighing. We now got what greenies going red, uh, greenies going well, red poles going well. So they're they're all right, uh, and we'll be keeping them for breeding. We're probably doing a pair of native bullfinches as well now. Uh, since may, moving about with the hybrid pairs, we've got all the hybrid pairs as well. We'll be doing the canaries, we've got the twice, and then we've got something which I can't tell you yet, but it's really exciting. Uh, so, yeah. Um, thanks, I've just looked at crossbow breeds page, I found them on, in, in, in December. Uh, yeah, Josh, so that that's it. It's literally the, a crossbow's not a bird generally that's um, one that requires... Um, a, a breeding season and those temperatures and those light hours, I don't think. Um, crossbills will breed pretty much any time out of the mole, um, from a lot from what I've heard a lot of guys say. I know there's a guy on there who's on uh on the crossbill breeders group, he's got his common crossbills down on eggs, there's a guy with his parrot crossbills down on eggs, there's a guy with his two parts on eggs, and um, the whole some a guy with whole finches on eggs. There's so much with them that you you know it's it's nuts um and crossbills will breed any time uh, malt is essentially what it is and you've just got to have them in condition and drop lucky is i think the right thing to say and um, we'll try crossbills again don't get me wrong but we didn't we didn't have a good experience with them this year and rather i'd rather put some effort into something else for the moment and try and try something else because i'm still learning um with for the first time uh with a lot of things don't get me wrong you're never going to be an expert and you're always going to be still learning but I've still not had everything yet. Not don't not saying I need everything or want everything. Um, but there's still a lot of birds I'd like to try and see how I get on with and whether or not they're something I can build on. Um where are so uh, what was it? sorry, social finch will cross there. I think almost maybe that whole finch. Oh, the, the you mean the society finch, yeah. Um they I've seen crosses of society finches with jarfers, owl finches. Zebs and something else, yeah. Uh, society finches of breed without, um, pretty much of, of how viable whether the eggs are viable or not. You know, if the full is a different question. Um, I saw one of a guy who paired a, a Gouldian with a canary, he got full eggs over the moon. Oh my god, we bred a, an Australian finch with a canary first time ever. Uh, it turns out a canary, a canary in the aviary next to it mated with the canary hen, which was with the Gouldian, uh, and ended up where they were all straight canary chicks. And he thought he crossed a Gouldian, this rainbow finch with, with canary. And I thought, well, like, can you imagine that? If you got a Gouldian crossed with a, a canary and it was fertile, suddenly you put in blues, greens, yellows, or, or just so many like rainbow of colours into canaries. It'd be brilliant. Um, are, are, are red siskin around uh, around all yeah you can get red siskins um yeah um don't get me wrong it's not something you can just walk into a pet shop and buy it's not something i don't think you could turn up at stafford and just have a really big choice of them but they are there um i, I don't really understand the red siskin prices um i've i had a guy message me yesterday who um, had mentioned to me he'd been offered a pair for 120. Is that too much? Because European siskins are only t only about 80 a pair. I was like, well, I think that's a good price because I've seen normal red siskins, straight normals for 250 quid a pair, and it's a lot of money. Um, and it's just that for bird for birds that, for at least in from what I'd seen, there was no visible difference in them. There was a difference of over double. So yeah um well that's that well guys it's um 25 to 9 i i probably need to get some tea as well soon i've run out of water so my throat's getting dry um and, and yeah so i think we're going to be we're going to be finishing the live stream off here just to show you we've obviously 
got a new t-shirt there and a new t-shirt there we've sent out the first orders of merch and um, which people have very much enjoyed so it's great to see um, uh, that the people are wanting to to get some merchandise and we're gonna we're gonna work on that and and build up more designs i'm going to get some things properly designed anyway um and then try and bring in a variety so as you can see this is a, a polo shirt this is a collared shirt this is just a prototype one i thought you know what we'll try it out and we'll see um, and then we've got this one which is a different design just a, a normal sort of t-shirt um, and we're just going to give it a go and hopefully it's all right and um, and yeah but they're really good quality i'm very pleased with them so it's one of those where if I can work on it, um, I want to make sure that everything merchandise-wise is quality and it's done well because I don't want to be selling crap to people. Um, and I want to make sure it's affordable as well. I, you know, I'm not going to go charge. You know, if you look at some merchandise, what people sell, I get they've got to make money on it, but it's also about trying to give back to the fans at least, and people who watch the channel and support the channel for myself at least. So it's like people normal yeah, a lot of youtubers would sell something like this for like 40 quid and that's like 25 30 quid on on some sites and i just think that's crazy so i'm not going to price for those yet but they're 1650 uh, and and that makes me a little bit just for the effort of it um and, and, and putting it in there just to make it all work i don't really make much out of it um, and if it's just a case of people like them and what so so yeah um but yeah that guys that's going to bring us to the end of this live stream if you want to donate any money to the channel anything anything's very much very much appreciated and you'll always get a mention uh, at the end as you'll see uh, if you go to end of any of my my videos on my channel there's always a thank you to our our our, our, our um our supporters on that and if you do donate any money to the channel then it will go into um future plans for that so covering costs of production costs and stuff i'm um generally guys i, I film off my phone uh, this is a, an iphone 11 i think yeah iphone 11 the camera's pretty good on it um but it's not you know it's nowhere near as proper good camera quality as a, a handheld camera so i'm trying to uh, trying to save up uh, for one of those where i can so that we can then get a, a proper really good quality handheld camera so i can film the birds better for you we can get really high definition images of them and i really want to do that because i think you guys would really enjoy that you get to see the bird in better definite in hd much better uh quality than this i mean don't get me wrong this is great but it's nowhere near as good as as something if you look at matt's production matt's videos of the canary room and, and the camera he uses and stuff it's superb um and then you look at big youtube channels and like the sidemen uh, and obviously nothing to do with nature the sidemen the i mean i love the sidemen it's great um and and what but you know you look at the camera quality and just stuff like that and i'd like something even if it's something like that just because i can film the birds better for you get a better look and you can focus on things a bit more so if you donate any money to the channel with the super chat option on the lives it's Obviously, once a chance once a month, anything's appreciated, very much appreciated. Um, and then it will all just go towards trying to put it back into the channel. Hopefully, I'll be able to get as a camera that's really good, uh, which we can then enjoy with a new pair of birds coming as well. Um, they're something special, something that's not been really recorded, documented, filming of them breeding. Um, and... Um, you know the, how to captive breed them so i want to make sure that that's really good so yeah uh, but anyway guys that you know huge thank you to everyone to come on the stream tonight um, i don't know uh the number of new unique viewers we've got on this but i mean i've seen it top 60 several times so guys that's just brilliant thank you so much the next um um monthly live will be january 1st the saturday we'll do it saturday evening all going well if there's a if there's anything different you'll see closer to the time i will put something on a, a confirmed date and a confirmed time so you can be here and I, I look forward to seeing everyone in the next um monthly live but until then guys then if you've got any more questions drop me a, a message on instagram drop me a message on facebook drop me an email oc.avery at gmail.com and i'll do my best to answer your questions and um, 
well, I'll, I'll, I'll see you hopefully in the next video uh, on 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 Friday uh, on Saturday morning, and then we've got the video on Tuesday uh, evening of the follow up from the uh, centenary show. But guys, huge thank you to everyone who's joined. It's so very much appreciated, uh, and I look forward to the next one. All right, thanks, guys, uh, and I'll uh, catch you all later.